What's up, Paladins fans? I hold shift here, and before we start get raging on the game, I want to rage about another topic, which is certain uh, opinions on my opinions, my takes in the game. I've been watching this game for three years, as most of you, I'm sure, know, and mostly from an overhead perspective through a spectator client, where I see how the game develops, I see how a team progresses, and I see when mistakes are being made. Now, because I don't play the game competitively, I've been getting some flack that my experience is not exactly as forthcoming as it should be. Well, I would just pose the question, does Jalen Rose not get any more credit because he's no longer playing basketball? I don't think so. Now, I might not sit here and say that I make the best coach in the world or that I make the best player in the world, but the fact of the matter is, I feel like I have a pretty strong eye for the game. The things that I'm seeing, the things that I'm predicting, and my opinions on the, some of the things seem to be coming relatively true. And throughout the rest of this video, we're going to be continuing to make those same bold statements, those same bold predictions, and using some honest, actual feedback to look at some of the things that happened in game and why they kind of why I think at least they match up with the things that I have to think and things that I have to say so if you don't like that if you think I'm unqualified stop watching I'll leave some time you can go ahead in case you don't know where the X button is in the video you can close it out it's fine okay now that we got that over with let's go into these games and talk to you about why I think what I think and if you don't want to think that again you can still leave it's anytime there's a pause button there's a close button you can get out of here whenever you want to start off the day, we would have Big Egos taking on Space Station Gaming. And this was going to be an interesting one, first and foremost, as Big Egos surprised most of us with their performance against the Renegades. And then, of course, they, you know, had some big words to say about Space Station Gaming. We had this one predicted to go 2-1, if you remember back towards our predictions from a couple days ago, for Space Station Gaming. We started off the day on Serpent Beach, first and foremost, and my first questions started to occur for Big Egos in their draft. Now, they played a Khan and a Ruckus, as a lot of the frontliners were banned away, and they played up against an Inanara and a Fernando, which, as I look at that frontline matchup, just the frontline matchup, those two, Fernando and Inanara, going up against a Khan and a Ruckus, I tilt that in favor of Inanara and Fernando almost every single time. There's no frontline ultimates that you could be used defensively, and there's not a big health pool when it comes to trying to deal with the sustain of having a shield plus an immortal versus Inanara being Inanara. I would have rather have seen them try to set up a barrack, I think. Just because the dome shield would provide some defensive capabilities, it would have allowed them to continue fights on a little bit longer. Instead, they had the Hexafire and Overpowered, which they never really came to go. So, I had to go... Another kind of backing. One of... We had a viewing party today. Shoutouts to Hedwin, who said this about this. You take two tanks who can't stay on the point in a game mode where you have to stand on the point. I agree with that 100%. Now, granted, there was a Willow, there was a Cassie, so the burst was there, but the problem was it was going up against a Drogos and an Andro, who did a very good job of making sure the backline wasn't free for a lot of it, and they also had a Ying, whose sustained healing was very impressive. The biggest thing of why SSG, I think, had a clear advantage, even though the game went 3-3 and would end in a 4-3 scoreline at the very end, SSG did everything right, for the most part. Now, round number two overall did not go so great for them. I guess it was technically round number three, whatever. But regardless, they had very beautiful soft resets. We've been throwing this term out a lot. Take a look at this clip here from SSG. This is back when it's 1-1, and SSG is able to find the opening pick, but unfortunately, they lose their Ying after the overpowered. And on top of that, they also lose a damage dealer, so we're left with a four on three on point. And look at this. Sadhack's able to get out. They're able to trade away William, but they don't have a healer with them. So what do they do? They call for the soft reset. They group up together. They wait for the Ying to come back. And as soon as she gets there, she gets everybody full. And then you're going to see Inara and Fernando recontest again. A beautiful soft reset when they're up 84% to 50. And you can already see with that numbers, with the frontliners that were had for SSG, Big Egos knows they can't contest. They would put themselves in a spot to where they would actually start to win this one out and they would win this point to one. Those are beautiful plays. These are things that we look for and things that we like to see. Other teams have been making mistake where it's four on five. We lost our damage dealer and we're not going to back up at all. We're just going to keep on pressuring the point. We're going to throw ultimates at it. We're going to try to make this a winnable fight when it just flat out isn't. Not a big fan of that. The other side of things, as we went to a 3-3, there were some absolutely beautiful ultimate combinations coming out of Space Station Gaming and a huge C9 coming out of the side of Big Ego. C9 when you're on the point and then you get off of it, the other team takes it, which is exactly what you see in this clip here. Now, this was a close game in the scoreboard. But again, I go back to the Fnatic Kanga game where, yes, you have one bad round, 
But instead of trying to hold it at a, we have a one point differential, we're gonna throw all of our ultimates at this and hope that we get the defense. Essentially, Space Station say, just reset ourselves. We have alternate control. We're gonna come back in. We're gonna beautifully use alternates together. And then we're gonna dominate the last point. This was not as close as the 4-3 would suggest. So all of the people that are out there saying that, oh, Big Egos, they look incredible. SSG doesn't look so good. They had one bad round. And yeah, it wasn't exactly the smoothest gameplay we've ever seen from Space Station. But the fact of the matter is, it was pretty solid gameplay through and through from Space Station. We would get this map going Space Station's way, and then they would try to reiterate that on Bright Marsh and uh, Leon, by the way, on FRZ God. Holy smokes, that's all you have to say. It was a 4 1 on Bright Marsh. Again, makes me feel pretty confident in my calls that Space Station was, even though the first game was 4 3, Space Station was the better team, without a doubt, in my mind, team wise. Going on to our second game of the day, it would be Sour Team taking up Armada. And this should have been a good one. I, we had this one going three games. If you remember back, our prediction was that this would go 2-1 in favor of Armada. We would start the day off on Bright Marsh for these two teams where Ash would get denied two different rally here trying to defend against the 2-1 push and got punished both times, never able to get it quite off. This one would start off as a 3-1. A lot of alts committing for the final push. Defense ends up working. The, the, the initial point of this fight was actually it was 1-1. Everyone was throwing ultimates. There was a huge committal from both sides but sour would just barely not be able to get the proper timing on some of the trigger on their last couple of alts they would lose out on bright marsh at a four to one scoreline and then we would go to serpent beach and i have to give huge props to please do and ragnarok who are substitutes coming in for this team and they are showing up holy smokes for subs they are playing so in sync not that in sync with these other members that they look like they could potentially make a full-on run at the rest of this bracket. I am so confident in these guys because of their play from these substitutes seamlessly working their way in. They have had solid team play. I'm very excited to see Armada move on. They, of course, win this one at a 4-1, so they would take this one at an actual scoreline of 2-0. At least we predicted the winner right. Now, to finish off the day, we would get our two losers bracket games, but yesterday we predicted the games that were going to be happening in the lower half of the loser's bracket. We predicted the Splice Renegades and the Kanga Cryptic game, thinking that was going to be the game that was up. But it was actually Sanguine versus the Big Egos who lost that day, and then Sour would have another chance. They'd be playing up against SK. We didn't make predictions for these, so I wanted to make sure I made some actual predictions so I had to stand by my word in case I was wrong. I would own up to it and tell you why I was wrong, because I am that journalistic in my stance as much as I possibly can be. So this is what we had to say middle of the stream during our live stream party about those two matches so we have to do predictions really quickly because we mixed up the schedule so we got big egos versus sanguine and sour team versus sk these are two really tough ones to call has big egos played well i think big egos has played well to be completely honest do they have the same level of team chemistry and uh synergy and effectiveness that sanguine has showed off with the five man burn? i don't think so i think this one's gonna go I'm going to go 2-0, Sanguine. I think Egos, uh, they have the damage dealing capabilities, but I don't think their team play is there. They've mismanaged ultimates. They have the ability of moving through, but I think that the IQ, the game IQ is going to favor Sanguine. SK versus Sour Team, I think both of these teams have shown some pretty drastic flaws, although I think, honestly, SK has shown more. They haven't played since the beginning, so they haven't played since Monday, so it's been a while since they've played. Sour Team, I think... Will not have the same chance to reanalyze their stuff, but I think that Sour Team takes this. I got Sour Team going 2-1, I think. So again, we had the 2-0 going Sanguine's way against Big Egos. You would say history would tell itself. These teams are very familiar with one another, not only from the PGS games that they play, but also from scrimmaging each other. And we would start off on Bright Marsh, as seems to be the trend lately, a lot of Bright Marsh. And it would go Big Egos' way after they really started to do a very nice job letting the pressure from Andro push into a Ying with proper support from the rest of the team. It didn't start that way, but it would eventually go that way. And you can see some instances where there's some sloppiness going on, specifically as you take a look at missed timings of ultimates. In this clip here, you're going to see Neo on the Willow go up for a Fae Flight at 600 HP. You notice the Ruckus is almost at Hexafire, and there are no targets whatsoever for this 
Willow to effectively kill. What they could have done is waited for that Hexafire to come online, use that on point, force everybody away from it, and then Fae flight into the back line so that he had some free targets to get full effectiveness. That's not the case that happens at all, though, and this Fae flight that was popped at about 600 HP ends up finding very little value. That was early in the game when things were not looking so great. It would be the first point going sanguine's way and then after that the andro started to pop off which allowed willow to get some extra damage in and it would be a 4-1 we would then go to stone keep sanguine would have the ultimate economy going into the final 3-3 but would routinely throughout this entire game continually and routinely throw ultimates away at the ancient rage makoa time and time again it was great peel from egos to make sure that people got out of fights alive and came back in with nearly full hp Edge came to play today, to be completely honest. He did exactly what he needed to do, finding some late success, getting into the Willow's face as they went up to again, uh, they went up against another Willow uh, 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 again, and this would be a 4-3 on Stone Keep, favoring the side of Big Egos. They would take this one to a 2-0. So we were wrong here, but again, this team familiarity is something that we thought would go Sanguine's way. What came out to be was that Sanguine would miss time ultimates. They wouldn't properly execute on some of their positioning when it came to their team comp as far as their strengths versus their weaknesses. But Big Egos made a lot of mistakes themselves. It just came down to the end of the day. The damage dealing power of Big Egos was just too much to overcome for Sanguine. To finish off the day, we would finally get ourselves another three-game set. This was SK versus Sour, and again, we predicted this one at a 2-1 scoreline going Sour's way based off the team play that we had seen from them. Of course, a couple of mistakes, and SK just hasn't seemed to have that cohesion. It would be a very good set, not for reasons because it was good Paladins, but because it was pretty evenly matched teams. It would start again on Bright Marsh, and in Vocal, my goodness, he held on to that true power for way too long. There were a couple of different instances where he could have staggered after a team fight win to get some extra kills on the back end to again more convincingly put the game in favor of SK and he didn't use it. He had a chance to follow up over a seismic crash which could have gotten him a couple of kills. He didn't use it. Instead he decides to use the true power at an even fight five on five full HP to full HP into a Drogos who was near his spawn. Drogos would live and there'd be no value from it. You have to find value out of ultimates. Pretty Hair knocked this out of the park, and you can start to see that the casters are starting to get a little frustrated seeing the ultimate economy being so vastly in favor of one team and never finding full effectiveness out of it. You can't have those mistakes as you move forward. Sour would also, though, for unfortunately, and the 2-2 fight, Again, this was an even game. They would die with a Dread Serpent and a Hexafire combination in their back pocket, and they would never get the chance again to swing the positioning back in their favor. They tried to use it desperately, but SK, great punishments on some missed positionings and some vulnerable targets at the end. But honestly, it just came down to some more crucial mistakes from Sour Team on Bright Marsh than it was from SK. That was SK's pick, by the way. So then we go to Sour's pick, and they would go on to Serpent Beach. This is a really close game. Again, like the Sour versus Armada game, there were a lot of full committals on pushes. But again, when there are these full committals and these choices to go all in or to use more ultimates, you start to see these mistakes coming in. SK would throw away so many ultimates after the OBJ was essentially guaranteed from Sour. You take a look at this one right here. Sour would actually try to use the Hexafire to open up this fight to try to burst down the Fernando. It wouldn't quite work out, but instead of Fernando coming back to point to get that immortal charge and then immortal on the point, the Throner goes forward further. I don't know where the communication is, but he goes way out. Anara's on the point for free. We'll eventually get that because why not? Because you're Anara sitting on the point with no contest. And then Fernando from the Throner, he ultimates after the point is pretty much already captured. It ended up being big plays from Nixus, Jopi, and Hayes after they finish up after a 3-3 draw going on to the last team fight. It was a very clean fight from Nixus, Jopi, and Hayes. They would win that fight rather convincingly, and they showed up, and they would win Serpent Beach. So we would go to another game three. And again, we had this one going Sour's way. Unfortunately for Sour, on Splitstone Quarry, they try to pull out a Torvald plus an Androxus. And again, the problem was not necessarily that combo. It was that combo going up against things like a Fernando Anara and a Cassie. It was just so hard for the Andro to find room. And the way to execute this high execution based IQ threshold when it comes to this kind of a combination in the draft is you have to back it up with one other person. Because the Torvald can't dive with an Adroxus. 
You, he can help enable the Androxus, but he can't go with him. So the way to execute this draft is to have Ash and Androxus with the Torvald decide which direction they want to go, start to push it. As soon as the Androxus gets out of range where the Torvald can help, you bubble him. And then when the back line is pressured, the Torvald and the Victor have to start looking at point to try to chew the Inara off of it. It never ended up being that way. Dethroner absolutely punished the, the little stepstone quarry angle of the map. Huge seismic crashes were coming in. They would take every single objective point, and Torvandro defensively is, is just pretty awful. There's just not much room to work with on that map flank-wise. So Sour, they would lose this one, in my opinion, in the draft. SK will move on, which will leave us with our predictions for tomorrow. And we've got five games to go over, starting off with Fnatic taking on Virtus Pro in the winner's bracket. This is going to be potentially a very good game. Fnatic is what I would consider the offensive-minded, playmaking-minded team, where they will utilize ultimates to make sure that they start off a team fight in their favor. Virtus Pro is a very reactionary team when it comes to their very passive to be those playmakers to initiate a team fight, but will try to counter you out at full value. We saw that very instantly when they played up against Splice as well as Sanguine. They have a very good IQ in the draft, so I anticipate these drafts to be pretty even. But at the end of the day, it comes down to who do we think will actually take this one. I've got this game going the way of Fnatic at a scoreline of 2 to nothing. I think these are going to be pretty close games, but I think that because Fnatic is not afraid to take those leaps and initiate plays, they might stumble here and there doing it as they're still trying to get themselves a little bit more roomed, uh, warmed up against their former opponents. But... I still think Fnatic will end up taking this one at a 2-0 scoreline. The next matchup that will come up will be the winner's bracket game of Space Station taking on Armada. And again, these are two PGS regional teams that have showed up and have performed very well, very centric, are doing very great rotates around their frontline play. Their backline has shown moments of brilliance. It's going to be a close game. This one's going to go three, I think. And gosh, I haven't made this prediction up in my mind. I'm trying to still think about the pros and the cons. I think that at the end of the day, Space Station has a little bit more flexibility. I think this one will go 2-1 in favor of Space Station Gaming, and it will send Armada down to loser's bracket. But it's going to be a good game. And then we already talked about Splice, Renegades, and Kanga, Cryptic, and the loser's bracket. We'll bring those back up for you guys to get those predictions once again. We had those games going three, but we got to talk about SK Gaming will be taking up against Big Egos to finish off the day as our fifth game. And goodness, these are two teams that are going to be very familiar with each other. Dethroner has some ideas as far as what he wants to do as far as bans against this apparently highly prioritized Ash from Big Egos. It's a hard one to call because even though SK took down Sour Team, I think if Sour Team had a more even draft... Pardon the doggos in the background if you can hear that. They're going wild. I think if Sour has a better draft, they end up probably having a better shot to take that set versus SK. I have this one going in favor of Big Egos. I think their frontline gameplay has been a little bit more solid. I think it's going to come on the pivot point of if these frontliners will continue to waste ultimates for SK. I don't think it's going to be very close at all. But Big Egos have been very trigger happy when it comes to their ultimates as well. But I think I see Big Egos taking down SK. That's going to be a big moment. You know, again, there's a lot of conversation about how this Big Egos team is impressed. I haven't necessarily been, quote-unquote, impressed by them yet, but they have done a passable job. Even the game versus Sanguine that they had today, it just seemed like Sanguine was not ready to play at the same speed as Big Egos. They had a couple of drafts that really favored their momentum. I don't think SK will properly execute a draft to try to pace out Big Egos a little bit slower. So I think this one will go 2-1 favoring Big Egos after a three-game set. These are going to be good games, though, to finish off. But Big Egos needs to clean up their gameplay. SK needs to clean up their gameplay. It's been pretty sloppy. At the end of the day, I think there's only five teams left in this bracket that could potentially be those top four. Obviously, you got Fnatic and Virtus Pro, Space Station and Armada, and then Kanga is my other team in that top five. Fortunately for Virtus Pro is that they will, after they lose tomorrow likely, they will go up against the winners of SK taking on Big Egos, which I think will be a very easy 2-0 for Virtus Pro. So they'll likely finish in the top four. It comes down to Space Station, Armada, and I think Kanga. With the potential of Renegades, I think they might have a shot here, but I think Kanga's better uh, flat out. And um, that's all I got on this. Again, if you stayed and watched this whole thing, you obviously have some value for what I have to say, even if it's to try to find some kind of counter arguments to what it is. But the fact of the matter is, we've got some things to back it up. And yeah, I might not be right all the time, 
And yeah, there might be some things that I'm missing, but I'm not going to sit here and do an hour and a half breakdown of one game of Big Egos taking on SK or Big Egos taking on Space Station and why Space Station was clearly the better team in a game that was a 4-3 game. Like, I'm not going to take the time to do that. Uh, if you want to, we can sit in the call. We can do that if you really want to. But I'm not going to do that on a tweet. I'm not going to do that in a video. we got to make it clear. Let's take a look at our predicted numbers if we can. So yesterday, we were at a... 58% win rate in our match pickums, and we were 69% in our maps. We would win only half of the games today, and a couple of them with some wonky score lines. So that will fall down to a 56% correct rate and a 62% map pickum. Not terrible, not the best thing, not the worst thing. Tomorrow's gonna be interesting. I think at this point, it just comes down to flat out execution in the loser's bracket. I think the winner's bracket will continue to be um, as streaky as we have been. Again, we won all of our round two games. The loser's bracket up until now has been relatively sloppy, uh, you know, today especially. But I think tomorrow you're going to start to see a little bit more concrete gameplay coming out. I'm excited to see it. We'll catch you there. You can watch with us live on my Twitch channel if you'd like to at twitch.tv slash I hold ship. Here's that image and graphic right there. I always mess that up. I have to, like, look physically at the camera to figure out which way my hands are going. We'll catch you then. Thank you for watching. And if you do value my opinion, I, I thank you again for your support. And if you don't, well, I'm sorry about you. I have my opinions. And again, if you don't like them, you shouldn't have been watching this long anyways. But it goes. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys next time. Until then, later, later. Bye-bye. Keep on raging on.